In an earlier video, I mistakenly said that Flameshot doesn't support Sway and doesn't support Wayland generally. This is absolutely not the case. It has experimental support for both Gnome and KDE Wayland and works just fine on Sway as well. It does so through XDG portals. On WO Roots though, it can be a little bit finicky to actually get working. So we're going to look at how to actually fix that today. First thing we need to do is make sure we have a couple of packages installed. Flameshot obviously being one of them, but I hope you knew that. So I'm going to be using the Arch Linux names because that's what I'm using, but all of this stuff should be packaged pretty much everywhere. It might just have a slightly different name. So the first thing we need is the xdg-desktop-portal. We also need the xdg-desktop-portal Dash WLR. This is going to let it work through WL Roots. We also need an application called Grim. So Grim is a really simple screenshotting application that you can go and use directly, but I'm not a big fan of it. Flameshot is going to use this to actually grab the screen. Second thing you need to do, which you should already be doing a Sway, is ensuring a bunch of variables are being set. Now, on Arch Linux, these variables don't get set by default, and they need to pretty much be set before Sway actually launches. So the recommendation on the Wiccan, the recommendation that I would have as well, is make a Sway launch script. So rather than launching Sway directly, I will run this script instead. We need to set this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and the others are just other things for other things in my system. Make sure these variables are being set. STL video driver to Wayland, underscore Java, underscore AWT, underscore window manager, underscore non reparenting equals one, QT underscore QPA underscore platform Wayland, XG current desktop sway, and XG session desktop sway as well. I will leave these in the description down below if you don't feel like typing. And then end the script with exec sway. This is going to actually open up sway. Now, if you're only using sway, you're not someone jumping back and forth like I am. You're a normal functioning human being. All of these variables can just be chucked in something like your ZSH env, your bash profile, and things like that. I do it through this method because if I have them always set, then it starts to mess with Xorg as well. From my understanding, it doesn't actually matter if you're on Sway or any other WR roots based compositor, always set these variables to Sway because Sway is considered the, like, the default implementation. On the note of swapping and being a big dum dum like me, if you are swapping back and forth, you probably will also have to go and fix up your portals. So I have another script in here called repair portals. Basically all this does is kills any of the existing running portals and restarts Pipewire. Now the restarting Pipewire stuff, that's for OBS. All you need to do for Flameshot is do this. I've noticed that if I don't do this, things just don't play nicely. The portals don't function at all. It just freezes and breaks. Killing them though, it's all good to go. You also want to make sure that systemd and dbus are aware of a couple of variables. So inside of my sway config, I am running two commands in here. I am running this command and this command. So systemctl dash dash user import dash environment display wayland display and sway sock. And then for the dbus command, dbus dash update dash activation dash environment dash dash systemd display wayland display and sway sock. And at this point, it is going to technically work in some context. Now, when you're not switching back and forth, going and running flameshot full and also flameshot screen and selecting which screen you want to be using is going to work perfectly fine. They were working when I switched back and forth this setup when I initially tested this. I don't know, something's broken. Flameshot GUI was the one that was just being weird. So Flameshot GUI works perfectly now with a single screen. With multiple screens, this happens. So it tries to merge all of the screens into a single screen. That's obviously a problem. So the way we address that is with a window rule inside of Sway. I've got this all the way down the bottom here. It is this one 
right here. So for the window with the app ID flame shot, we're going to be setting a couple of things. So floating enabled, making sure it's a floating window. We're going to disable the full screen because it's trying to full screen on a single display and not stretch across the entire thing. I don't know why it operates like that. Also moving it to the absolute position of 0, 0, which is the top leftmost corner of my leftmost monitor, and then removing any of the border pixels, so any of the like graphical border around it. That last point is entirely optional, and is just to make sure this border around every window doesn't appear around flame shot as well. So if we go and save this and then reload Sway, this should make the GUI work basically like it should. Now, I don't know if you're actually seeing this because both of my screens are covered by the flame shot overlay, but this is selecting stuff like it should be, and my hotkeys are going to work as well. So I can go and escape and then quit out of that. There is a solution for full and screen. It's just not a great solution. What we can do is run the interface through xwayland. So the qt underscore qpa underscore platform variable controls whether qt is going to do its wayland rendering or its xorg rendering. Setting it to wayland is going to do wayland. Setting it to xcb is going to do xorg. So if we go and run the flame shot full command, give that a moment. It is going to take a little bit of time to run, but in just a moment, it should show an interface here to go and save. Now that I'm recording, it's not going to actually show the interface, is it? It's actually going to break and ruin everything I'm trying to say. It did open like 15 seconds later. As I said, it's a solution, but not a good solution. So let's go and save this. And then if I go into my screenshots folder, open up this file here. There we go. It is a screenshot of my entire desktop. You probably don't want to use this for Flameshot GUI though, because if you like your hotkeys, well, they're not actually going to work. You can press them as much as you want and nothing's going to happen. Or the alternative solution is bite the bullet, go to Flathub, download the Flatpak, and it's going to give you a much better experience. I am not a big fan of using a Flatpak for an application I can install just regularly, but it is basically going to work out of the box, and it's a much more seamless experience. But go ahead with pretty much whatever method you want to use. It really doesn't matter. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you using Flameshot on WR Root? Are you using it on Sway? Is your experience better than mine? Am I just getting the absolute worst possible Flameshot experience possible, and everybody else is working seamlessly. Maybe it has something to do with me switching back and forth. That certainly doesn't help. But even when just booting directly into Sway, I still have issues. Either way though, I like Flameshot. I'm going to keep using it. It's a great application and I recommend that you use it as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That's going to be it for me. So if you like this video, remember to like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become, that's the wrong screen. I really cannot wait until this application can support global hotkeys. Come on to these amazing people over here. Uh, Page subscribers, that'll be pay. Description down below. Podcast, tech, over tea, gaming channel, Broder Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.